Okay, well, let's begin with solving some problems. And you've been with me long enough to know we always start at the first one. Exercise 6.1 will bring us to learning objective number one. So let's read our question. Arizona Brick Corporation produces bricks in two processing departments, molding and firing. Information relating to the company's operations in March follows. A, B, C, D, E, F. We have six um, six transactions. Required prepared journal entries to record items A through F above. All right, so let's start with A. What do we have? Raw materials were issued for use in production. The molding department, 28,000. The firing department, 5,000. So we have to record this. Well, it's leaving raw materials inventory, so we know that's the credit, and it's entering work in process. But there are two departments. So what we do is we call it work in process molding. And we're told that was 28,000. And we have work in process for the firing department. It's just that simple. We just create a new account, one for each work in process account. The rest is as it would be. Raw materials inventory decreases by the sum of the two, which is 33 thousand dollars so that wasn't difficult at all was it B direct labor costs were incurred molding department 18,000 firing department 5,000 so we're increasing our work in process in the molding department and we're told that that was 18,000 and we're increasing our work in process in the firing department and we're told that is 5000 And just like we did in job cost, we can't let this hit the income statement. It must be a balance sheet account. So we don't put wages expense. We put wages payable. We create a liability for that, 23000 C. C, manufacturing overhead was applied. Notice it says applied not incurred, applied. We're still using the predetermined overhead rate for each department. It was applied, molding department 24,000, firing department 37,000. So work in process for the molding department was increased by 24,000. And work in process for the firing account was increased by 37,000 and that came out of the manufacturing overhead account manufacturing overhead and that was 61,000 now there's some question as to whether or not there's since there's a predetermined overhead rate for each department is there also a manufacturing overhead rate for each department uh, sorry, is there a different manufacturing T account for each department? If we're applying overhead, do we have a separate overhead account for each one to apply it to? And the answer is no. Reason is, is you have to you have to think about how how um, these works. Let, let's say that this is our our factory building right here, and we'll try to draw a nice little building with no windows because that's the whole idea behind industrialization, right? Is it's dark and it's dank, and there's the one door in and Here's the door where the people who are fired uh, have to walk out. So inside here, uh, you have one complete line where the product comes off the end. So this first part may represent the first department. This represents the second department. This represents the third department. But the costs are one building, right? So one insurance, one utility bill, one property tax bill, etc., etc., that gets divided between all the departments within the building. So there is one manufacturing overhead account, manufacturing overhead, where the actual costs are all listed here, and each department has a predetermined overhead rate based on some percentage of all of these costs, and they get applied out of here. So there is still only one manufacturing overhead, uh, overhead account where we have the actual costs that are incurred here, and we have our applied costs over here. It's the same as chapter six, or sorry, chapter five with job costing, when we have 
multiple predetermined overhead rates for different departments on the same job. It's the same manufacturing overhead account. Only the work in process account uh, multiplies. In other words, we have separate work in process accounts for each department. Okay, so now that that little aside is over, let's continue on. D. Unfired molded bricks were transferred from the molding department to the firing department. So it's going into the firing department, so work in process firing must increase, but it's leaving work in process molding. So we know what our accounts are in our transaction. How much is it here? According to the company's process costing system, the cost of the unfired molded bricks was 67000 So 67000 enters the firing department and 67000 leaves the molding department. E. Finished bricks were transferred from the firing department to the finished goods warehouse. So we know that finished goods inventory increases and since it's leaving work in process firing department we know that's the credit amount. According to the company's process costing system cost of the finished bricks 108,000. 108,000. And we're going to see how we get to these numbers. How we get to. So it says according to the company's process costing system. Well, as we go through the questions, we'll see how we get these numbers that transfer between departments, how we determine these costs, and how we determine the cost of finished goods, just like we did in, in job costing. Well, we're not done. Don't leave yet. We have one more, one more letter to deal with F. Finished bricks were sold to customers. According to the company's process costing system, the cost of the finished bricks sold was 106. So we know that that is leaving finished goods inventory. 106,000 is leaving finished goods inventory. And if it's leaving finished goods inventory and it's being sold, it must be recorded as a cost of goods sold. Remember, when anything leaves finished goods sold, it goes into cost of goods sold. That is 6.1 with a little bit more lecture or lesson involved in it. Isn't that nice? Exercise 6.2 brings us through learning objective 2 and this is computation of equivalent units using the weighted average method. Lindex company manufactures a product that goes through three processing departments. Information relating to activity in the first department during October is given below. Typically, we'd do one of these, by the way, we'd do one of these for every department. But here, we're only doing it for one department, just to sort of get our hand uh, uh, used to how this is written out. So there's our information. Uh, we're looking at page 230, uh, exercise 6-2. The department started 195,000 units into production during the month and transferred 205 to completed units uh, of completed units to the next department required compute the equivalent units of production for the first department for October assuming that the company uses the weighted average method of accounting for units and costs so we're doing basically uh, the first part of what you'll see is the production report and the first part is the quantity schedule we start with the quantity schedule and equivalent units. I'll write the whole term out now, but from now on I'm just going to shorten it to EU. Equivalent units. So this is the first part of any production schedule. So we start with our production, or, or sorry, our quantity schedule. And this is where we itemize the units to be accounted for. So that's how we head it up. Units to be accounted for. In other words, where did they all go? So we have our work in process. We have our beginning count. Notice it's not a balance, it's a beginning count. And we are told that there was 25,000 units in work in process at the beginning of October. And we started production and we're told we started production on 195,000 units. So we have to account for 220,000 units. There we go. This is what we have to account for. Now we're going to do our equivalent units schedule. So we'll write over here equivalent 
units. And we are told that we have uh, materials cost and conversion cost. So we only have two cost categories to figure out, materials and conversion costs. And you'll recall that conversion costs is the combination of direct labor plus manufacturing overhead. And that's called a conversion cost. You can go back to chapter two to see that. So here, what we're doing here is units accounted for as follows. Notice how this is symmetrical. Units to be accounted for are these, 220,000. Units accounted for as follows. We had units transferred out. We're told that some units were transferred out. And how many were transferred out? 205,000. Now we have to put them into equivalent units. So of this 205,000 that were transferred out, how many of them are 100% complete with respect to materials? Well, all of them, right? All of them are 100% complete with respect to materials. How many of them are 100% complete with respect to incurring conversion costs? Well, all of them. So when we're talking about our equivalent units in terms of materials, it's 100% of all the units transferred, and same with conversion. However, it does change for work in process. Work in process, we need our ending count, our ending count. And we see down here that we have work in process for October 31st. We have 15,000 units. So our total units, we'll get to the equivalent units in a second. Let's look at our total units. Here we have 220,000 total units. So we had to account for 220,000 units. We have accounted for 220,000 units. We're good on that. Let's turn these 15,000 into equivalent units because they're not 100% done, are they? We're told that of these 15,000 units, 70% of the material cost has been incurred. So 70% of 15,000 is 10,500. What this is saying is that if these 15,000 units are 70% done with respect to material cost, it's the same as if we had 10,500 units done 100% of the material cost. In other words, we have 10,500 equivalent units with respect to material cost. But conversion costs, we're told, are only 50% incurred. So 15,000 units times 50% is 7,500. So the costs incurred so far on these partially completed units is equal to the cost incurred if 7,500 units were 100% done. That's what that means. So these are our equivalent units of production. In materials, we've completed 215,500 with respect to material costs. And we've completed 212,500 with respect to conversion costs. There is nothing saying that these two numbers need be equal. And these numbers need not balance with this total. These are partially completed units. All we're doing is and these 25,000 were partially completed when we started. We started 195, finished 205. Now we only have 15 partially completed. This balances off, but there's no neat reason these numbers need equal any of these, nor equal each other. They're simply just equivalent units to help us determine what our costs are per equivalent unit. This is the first step. That is 6.2.